Hello web developers, uh, this is Sean and I am here to give you a little introduction to the Mad Libs assignment from Watts 3020. So if we uh, take a look at the repo here on GitHub, this is the source repository and the SU web dev account. If you scroll down here on the readme, you will see a description of what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to basically populate a bunch of variables and then uh, use those variables to fill in the blanks on a, uh, a, a Mad Lib style uh, project. And, and the point of this is just to get a little bit used to the syntax of JavaScript and how it feels. And then also to give everybody a chance to sort of work out how they're going to work on things, what editors they're going to use and how they're going to run their code as they work on it. So um, the first thing that we wanna do is fork this repository. I'm going to fork it into my personal account. And once this is complete, then we will be able to clone it to our local development environment. So I'm going to clone it there. I'm going to jump into my terminal. I'm on a Mac. You could be on um, you know, Windows using Commander or um, Bash on Ubuntu on Windows or whatever. You could be on um, a hosted environment like Cloud9 or Code Anywhere. But I'm going to uh, clone this into my direct into my temp directory here. So git clone, and I'm going to paste in that URL, and it's going to clone for me. I'm going to move into that directory, and uh, and then I'm going to uh, open these files in my preferred text editor, which is Sublime Text. Uh, so. Now we have all of the files open from the source repository and we can get an idea. We can review the readme here if we want to or we can look at it on GitHub. Um, we can look at the index.html. Uh, this, this, the Mad Libs text is uh, Oh Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. Um, and, uh, and then of course we can go into the main.js file and we can start filling in all of these to-dos. So um, basically, uh, we're going to use a lot of these prompt commands just to define all of these different variables. So, um, so I'm going to, uh, so, so if we look at this, we can see that we have a prompt. We give the, the, the user a prompt. They're going to fill in some text uh, that is going to be stored in the variable like we've named it here. And then if we scroll down to the bottom of this file, what we see is that we've got a bunch of story text and we can see that that variable is being um, popped into that uh, text and uh, that's going to create our Mad Lib effect. So all we need to do is make, make our way through um, all of these variables. And uh, honestly, this is a lot of typing out uh, these prompts. So I'm going to do this really quickly and put it on a time lapse. And then I will come back once I've um, gotten all these prompts taken care of. Now that I've finished uh, filling in all of the words, uh, the next thing that we have to do is um, write the lines of code that will uh, collect a, a little number from the user. Um, so that's basically the same thing that we were doing before with the prompt statement. So we're gonna call this user number as it's specified. We'll ask them for their lucky number. Hopefully it will make it extra good. Then we need to generate two more numbers called number two and number three. Uh, this is going to allow us to practice with a little bit with our operations. So I'll say let number two equal user number to the fourth power. And then I'll say let number three equal user number divided by number two plus number two divided by 12. 
Now that we've populated all of these lines, we can we should be able to test our code and run it. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too difficult. The point was just to get a little bit used to uh, writing some of this JavaScript. Um, but now that we've got this done, we can actually run it. And so to run the code, um, I'm actually going to use um, a command that is a Python command. So I'm going to go back into my repository here on the terminal, and I'm going to um, run a command that is uh, Python dash M simple HTTP server 8000. Now, if your system is configured to run Python 3 by default, you'll need to use a different command, um, but uh, which is linked in our resources for the week. But for now, uh, a lot of systems are still configured to use Python 2.x by default, and that's what my Mac is configured to use. So I'm going to use this, and it's going to open up, um, it's going to start a web server that I can then run, that, that is running, and then I can then hit it on um, in my web browser in the local host so I can test out and see if my code works so I'm gonna click back over to the web browser and pull up a new tab and if I just go to localhost colon 8000 it says okay enter an honorific title um, so I'm going to say King uh, what is a full name I'm just going to put in a bunch of information I'm not gonna read it out but um, And so here we have it now. Uh, you can see that our text has been successfully put in. Uh, our section numbers are all crazy with the number that I entered and then the numbers that we calculated. Uh, we have King as the honorific. Uh, this poem becomes about the train instead of the ship. Um, we have conspicuous noted, um, use of whoopee cushions. Um, being heard in every uh, stanza. So this has been successful. And um, we're previewing this in our browser here running on localhost um, and the uh, at the port 8000 because we have this HTTP server running here. And so when we want to kill this HTTP server, we can just hit control C and then that stops the HTTP server. If we were to refresh this, we would see that there's no site there anymore now that that HTTP server is not running. So what I can do next is uh, commit my code. Uh, and this is just like a normal project. So I run git status. Um, I'm going to add my changes. And then I'm going to push those uh, to origin. And then after I push those to my origin, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a git checkout dash B gh dash pages so that's going to make a new branch called gh pages and check that out and then i'm going to just do a git push dash u origin gh pages colon gh pages now this is the usual command that we use to push a local branch up to a remote server and to update the reference so that this local branch will reference the remote branch as its um as its its uh, parent branch and um and we're going to call that branch GH pages in both places. I'm in a little typo, but I got that fixed now. So we're going to enter there, and we will push that. And so that's great. Uh, now we can uh, refresh this repository here, and we see that my my change set is pushed to the master branch. I can look at my GH pages branch, and I see that that is basically the same as the master branch, which is correct. And if I go into settings here and scroll down, I can see that I have uh, my site deployed and it's going to give me the same, um, it's going to give me the same uh, uh, questions. So I'm going to fill those out really, really quickly. I'll put this on time lapse. So here we go, we've got it running on our server. Uh, we see all of the results as we're supposed to see them, and it's a fun little exercise. So you can always dress this up with some styling. You can do a lot more things with the JavaScript. Uh, you have a model here. Feel free to poke at it and change things around. 
try out all sorts of new stuff and see, uh, just start getting a feel for how JavaScript works and how the syntax of JavaScript works, especially. Make sure that you note uh, the uh, way that we're using the line endings, the semicolon line endings. Um, we're using these parentheses to indicate that we're calling a function. We'll dive into functions more later, but that's what that is. Um, we have to wrap strings in these uh, quotes, and um, we're declaring these variables here using the let statement in this case. Technically, we could be using the var statement, um, but we probably don't want to be using the, con the const statement. And we, um, we should really go back through and change these uh, comments. We don't need all of these comments now that we've written all of this. We could put in one summary comment that here we're just collecting data from the user, and here we're manipulating some of that data, and then here we're putting that data into uh, the page. So this has been a really quick demonstration of how to complete the Mad Libs assignment from Watch 3020 from the Introduction to Programming with JavaScript um, course. Uh, hopefully this went well for you, uh, and um, good luck trying it out on your own. I encourage you to do so. Take care. Bye.